It is Saturday morning cartoons. And here is a uh, here is a sketch. Uh, we can't find uh, uh, any photographs, or at least photographs that we can uh, uh, confirm are photographs of the rabbi. This is uh, uh, Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford, and this was uh, drawn found in one of his notebooks, drawn by one of his uh, uh, his students here. Uh, Obviously, the rabbi is in uh, uh, is glowing. He's in a high state of consciousness uh, uh, there. Uh, I I think the artist tried to sh show that uh, when he would get into that state, his propeller on his yarmulke uh, would start to twirl, and uh, the zippy, of course, is. Uh, the school, the the ashram, I guess, if you call a Kabbalah initiatory group an ashram, uh, the Zuru Babel Institute of Philosophical Youth, and of course Lamed is uh, the rabbi's name, Lamed Ben Clifford. Okay, and um, it's been twenty two years. Uh, since the release of the, the Chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. That's a book that uh, I helped compile. And it's been uh, 26 years. Uh, and 26 is a big number in Hebrew because it's uh, the numeration to uh, the letters Yod, He, Vav, He. Uh, the ineffable tetragrammaton adds to 26. So, uh, it makes that appropriate for uh, this time. It's been 26 years since the unexplained disappearance of the controversial rabbi whose unorthodox teachings form the substance of the text of uh, the Chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Ben Clifford. Uh, it's av uh, it's available everywhere. I think the one that I, uh, I have at hand is one of the rare... Uh, uh, first uh, edition uh, that uh, is bound in ch in chicken skin uh, with uh, uh, book plate illustrations by the, the the great Australian artist Barry Hale, uh, and uh, you can see how I've I've beat it up over the over the years. It's had a lot of uh, and here's Barry Hale's uh, book plate that he made for each of us. And I, I guess there was only 43 of these made, so I, I doubt very highly uh, if you'll find the hardbound edition. But, of course, the paperback's uh, always available on Amazon. But anyway, uh, let's look at the rabbi for a second there. Um, it's been 26 years since the unexplained disappearance of the controversial rabbi whose unorthodox teachings form the substance of the text. I was initially flattered when asked by my publisher and colleagues to collect and curate the material for what would become that landmark publication. I never dreamed, however, the assignment would become so challenging and exasperating. Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford, his real name is unknown, was a highly eccentric character. His followers, although few in number, uh, enthusiastically embraced his non-sectarian non -sectarian doctrines and methods. Unfortunately for his biographers and st for, uh, future students, he rarely committed any of his discourses to writing. He was hopelessly undisciplined and relied almost exclusively upon person-to-person -person tutoring and informal interactions with a small circle of disciples, few of whom took excellent notes. Most of them did not. <coughs> if you'll excuse me, 
No, I'm not. I don't think I'm coming down with anything. It's just very chilly. and So there. Now, I'm reading from the son of Chicken Kabbalah. If you don't have the son of Chicken Kabbalah, uh, you're missing out on a rare holiday treat. But anyway, allow me to continue. After his still unsolved disappearance in July of 1997, his colleagues were burdened with the ponderous tax, task of shifting through stacks of scrapbooks and manuscripts that towered floor to ceiling in every room of his otherwise charming Long Island beach house. Directing the labor of collecting and catalog, cataloging was Ben Clifford's administrator and magical son, Dr. Gizmo Ben Lamed. I prevailed upon this saintly and good-humored gent gentleman to be the project editor of Chicken Kabbalah, the Chicken Kabbalah. I'm embarrassed to admit that the popularity of Chicken Kabbalah came as a complete shock to all of us. From the first week of its release, critics of the esoteric literature reacted with extraordinary kindness. Sales figures for Chicken Kabbalah, while modest compared to those of sadistic erotic novels or gluten-free cookbooks, continue to tolerably satisfy the publisher. Who for the last uh, 15 years has urged me to write a sequel? There were simply no more Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford texts to publish. I was secure in my belief that the material available to us when we researched the Chicken Kabbalah represented nearly all the writings, notes, and interviews known at the time to exist. Happily, that's no longer the case. Under the heading, Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford, Dead at Last. The story of how all this new material came to light is a curious as is as curious as everything else in the surrounding the bizarre life and enigmatic uh, adventures of this holy man because his disappearance was unexplained and a body was never recovered ben clifford's estate languished in limbo for many years Legal disposition of his affairs was postponed a dozen times, triggered by rabbi sightings reported from all, all around the world. Many of these were obvious hoaxes perpetrated by grief-maddened chicken cabalists. Others were disturbingly bizarre and eerily genuine. To this day, many remain unexplained. Perhaps the most dramatic sighting was bo uh, bolstered by the testimony of Sister Gina Martini and 11 Carmelite nuns in Albany, New York, who reported in 1999 uh, being startled after Vespers by a particular, particularly clad, <laughs> I believe that's peculiarly clad inter uh, intruder matching the rampai's description. Friskily darting in and out of rows of dry, drying laundry in the, covenant, in the convent garden. Two years later, police in Orlando, Florida, responded to a disturbance inside <clears throat> the Noah's Ark attraction at the Holy Land Experience amusement park. A man who boldly identified himself as Rabbi Lama Ben Clifford was subdued and briefly detained for loudly berating a teenage actor portraying the high priest Caiaphas for making lewd comments to the morbidly obese actress portraying Noah's wife. Naturally, each reported sighting had to be followed up by insurance company detectives whose investigations necessitated repeated postponements of the legal proceedings. On April 1, 2015, Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford was at last pronounced 
legally dead. By Judge Terence Stuhl of the Superior Court of Suffolk County, New York. News of the final dispos disposition stirred little interest in the esoteric uh, community, most of whom, like me, were quite certain that Chicken Kabbalah would remain the final published exposition of the teachings of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. Then, on April 30th, 2015, I received a text message from, from Dr. Ben Lamed, that's uh, Gizmo Ben Lamed, his uh, uh, executor. Um, and, and I, this is how the note read. Oh my God, three bags full of Lamed Ben Clifford goodies found in the BNL. Please call apparently Zippy Real Gizmo. I immediately phoned uh, Dr. Ben Lamed, who was so excited I could hardly follow the particulars of his rambling narrative. I'll attempt to summarize. Shortly after Judge Stuhl pronounced Rabbi Ben Clifford legally dead, he discovered a bag of still warm onion bagels on the sunroof of his car in the courthouse parking garage. Inside the bag, he found an envelope containing a tiny key, along with a handwritten note that read as follows. Dear Judge, or whoever declared me legally dead, hello from the other side. Don't freak out. Nobody really dies. But you'll find out. You'll find that out. Just don't worry about it. Hope you enjoy the bagels, but please don't eat the key. It unlocks storage locker number 528 in the kitchen of the cafeteria at the Brookhaven National Laboratories here on Long Island. Take the bagels home, but please deliver the key along with this note to my old friend, Dr. Gizmo Ben Lamed at uh, 3520 Greenbrier Road in Montauk and direct him to immediately take possession of the contents of the locker. The contents are really, really cool, interesting and important. I would write more, but I'm dead, and I keep getting ectoplasm all over the typewriter. Thanks and have a nice eternity. Signed, the late, <laughs> Rabbi, the late Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. Okay, now it wasn't easy for Dr. Ben Lamed to gain security clearance to the highly secretive Brookhaven National Laboratories, itself the subject of conspiracy theories concerning the Philadelphia experiment, time travel, and extra, extraterrestrial intercourse. It seemed the rabbi's only connection to the Brookhaven to Brookhaven had been with its one-time director. Dr. Zaya Yokohana, an Aramaic scholar and amateur Kabbalist who had organized the rabbi's 1975 lecture tour in Baghdad. When Gizmo was finally allowed access to the kitchen area and opened the locker, locker 528, he discovered two large and curiously decorated carpets rolled up and propped in one corner. He also found three plastic tra plastic trash bags stuffed with documents, notebooks, ritual scripts, and a Canadian first aid uh, Canadian Army first aid kit, a pitch pipe, and some colored pipe cleaners, and a 1967 Mini Moog synthesizer. Gizmo pleaded with me to join him in Montauk, and I immediately cleared my schedule and booked a flight to New York. What we discovered revealed an exciting and previously unknown facet of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford's life and teaching methods. The most stunning revelation confirmed the existence of an order 
resembling the rabbi's alleged Kabbalah school, the Zuru Babel Institute of Philosophical Youth, or Zippy. Biographers, myself included, had long assumed Zippy was, a, was purely mythological, a whimsical fable he invented as a teaching device. It appears we were wrong. The documents reveal that for a number of years, Ben Clifford was the hierophantic director of a strange and highly unorthodox Kabbalistic initiatory society. He didn't refer it specifically as Zippy, but rather by the generic designation, Our Holy Order, O-H-O. Passports and unsent postcards confirmed that at the beginning of 1984 and continuing every year, he, uh, including every other year, he would disappear for as long as six weeks at a time. Not even his closest Montauk colleagues knew where he went or what he was up to. His Long Island students fantasized he was moonlighting as a spy, or perhaps he had mistresses. Most of them simply assumed he needed to periodically checking, check himself in for drug or alcohol detox. In actuality, he was traveling all over the world, Wales, Norway, Macedonia, Poland, Germany, Australia, Japan, Croatia, Shanghai, Beijing, and Bethel, Connecticut. These were not lecture tours. He traveled to initiate student candidates into a three-degree Kabbalah mystery school. The documents discovered in the kitchen locker contained complete scripts for each of the three initiation ceremonies, along with portfolios of degree-specific study materials, toys, exercises, and meditations. For the chicken Kabbalists, or indeed anyone searching for practical applications of Kabbalah as a self-transformational practice, these documents are pure gold. It is this material, including scripts, commentaries of the initiation ceremonies themselves, that make up the major portion of this book. Which I've tried to order in an approachable format. I've not been able to determine with any degree of certainty whether or not any of these OHO lodges continue to operate. And I'm going to put a footnote to that, <laughs> that they have been operating. The entire series of three degrees have been performed uh, in, in the United States and several countries uh, around the world since the publication of the, of the book. It gives a workable, a serious workable system, but I digress. But because I'm certain that the rabbis wish that his secret initiations and exercise be made public after his death, it's clear to me that it was his intention that the work of initiating and instructing new members should continue. I have therefore organized this book in a format that I believe the good rabbi envisioned, a practical handbook or guide for both the solitary chicken Kabbalists and all other adventurous individuals who believe they can play well with others to experience the initiation ceremonies and degrees of the OHO or the ZIPY or whatever you want to call it. To paraphrase the immortal Rabbi Ben Clifford, call it anything you want. Don't worry about it. You're a chicken Kabbalist.
And that's the Saturday morning cartoons. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope if you're serious about uh, uh, actually utilizing the fundamental Kabbalah uh, uh, books you read and and the the dynamics of uh, of Kabbalah I actually put into a self initiation. Uh, uh, practice where you can actually install the Kabbalah inside yourself instead of just reading about it. I think you'll love both the Chicken Kabbalah and the Son of Chicken Kabbalah. Now the the three degree ceremonies of the Chicken uh, Son of Chicken Kabbalah or the OHO uh, are practical for for uh, uh, a, gr a group working uh, but all it would take would be one or two uh, people that would want to join in the fun as as uh, as officers and candidates uh, but mostly and more practically the, they're an outline for self-initiation uh, so you don't have to have a hotel ballroom in three days to to pull it off but if you do it's a real hoot and just ask anyone that's gone through it anyway that's it uh tomorrow will be uh will be sunday school and i hope we see you then until then continue to be good to yourself be good to each other and don't worry about it do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law love is the law love under will